compared to maybe larger parks, um, Isle Royale is the least visited national park in the lower 48. The people who come and spend time here want to spend time in the backcountry, want to spend time away from the mainland. Um, oh, so we came all the way in here. Mm -hmm. Because we're the least visited national park in the lower 48, it allows us to have some intimate conversations with people. Um, and so instead of answering the same question all day, um, visitors will come with a picture of a spider. From, what is this spider that I spent like an hour today staring at? And then we can have that conversation about spiders. Like I wasn't expecting to have that this morning, but now I'm like talking about spiders and other bugs with this person. And it was all because of an experience they had in the outhouse. <laughs> so those kinds of weird quirky things are why I love working at this place um, and how uh, intrigued people are when they get here. Hi, I'm Jenna Banky, the lead interpreter of Windigo at Isle Royale National Park. This is my third season here in Windigo. In my job, also, I'm just fascinated by this place. The Grand Portage Band of Lake Superior Chippewa, the relations with the park, I think, are getting better over time. They uh, plan to come out later this summer, um, and we're going to fly their flag. <laughs> this season we changed our orientation when people first come here to do a land acknowledgement. So that's the, I think the first time the park has officially done that, yep. um, which I think is really important. I think there's still a lot the park can do um, to help relations with the tribe, but I think we're taking steps in the right direction. Folks who do Moose Watch, I think, have the ultimate Isle Royale experience because they're bushwhacking and um, treasure hunting, really, and they're contributing to the longest predator prey study in the world. And the knowledge that they come back with is profound um, and really kind of helps connect the visitors to what has been going on here for so long, I think. Laureen Neuenheis. I'm from Traverse City, Michigan. Well, the program is called Moose Watch, but we're looking primarily for, for moose bones because those are the most prevalent. But any information we can get on the wolves is, is critical at this time. So we were able to recover this wolf skull. And this is an all-woman team. This is, this is the second all-woman team out here. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Thumbs up. So, so that night you, find, you found the skull, you're uh, back. I was sleeping with like three hats on and Julie, who is a hunter and trapline runner in the UP, she listened for a while until she was positive it was wolves. Right. And yeah, then tell them just, what you did. And then I tried to go to sleep, but it was dead calm. And I could hear just slow branches breaking, just slow, deliberate steps. It definitely was not a moose because we hear moose so often, like they yeah. trample through our camp. I was like, okay, that feels way too deliberate, way too intentional. Mm -hmm. So then we at least started a conversation about 2 a.m. to uh, at least let them know that humans were there and hopefully that they keep a fear of humans. And after we talked for a while, I got out and I clapped my hands and I just said, yeah. hey, people here, you know, this is our territory right now. And I clapped my hands just to make a lot of noise. <laughs> but I wanted to, you know, just alert them in a very loud way that we were there. Nice. And to be safe. I wanted yeah. everyone to be safe. Yeah. So yeah. the next morning we yeah. moved our bones away from our camp and cached them and moved our camp a little further away just to recover that land for the wolves. Yeah. If they want to check it out, let them check it out and kind of respect that. Yeah. And wolves very rarely attack people. So, oh, I mean, right. there's kind of this inherent fear, but yeah. it's it's a real rare thing. Right. Yeah. Well, and yeah, we're in their wilderness right yeah. now. Right. So, I mean, so we want to be respectful. Yeah. This yeah. is such a special place. Yeah. It is. Hi, I'm Haley Boone. I'm a PhD student at SUNY ESF, State University of New York, College of Environmental Science and Forestry. I run the trail cams to, uh, one, work on my PhD, but also work with the National Park Service in their wolf study. My mileage ranges from about 15 to 22 miles um, a day going around checking cameras. 
It's a very isolated island and it's either boat or by foot. We have our cameras placed over a kilometer apart sometimes and the only way you really can get it is by just hiking there. I always kind of think you need to be a special kind of person to do well in this field or even just like be somebody who goes into the wilderness. You kind of are on a negative slope a lot. It's hard. It's hard to like bring yourself out of you got stuck in a swamp. You're a little tired. One of the more humbling things uh, I love about this job is I might be cussing in one moment and then I'll turn like a corner and I see like a beautiful landscape or I see like a really cool run into a moose and then you're like, this is amazing. This is where I get to work. Yesterday I had a very kind of grueling day and I opened and I saw a vista of the whole island. I was like, this is so amazing that I get to work here and I get to be a little intimate with these animals and I know kind of what's going on. It's a really great feeling. So this was my last camera set. All winter? This is all a winter's winter. worth of photos. Yeah, so there's six over six thousand photos on this one SD card. Friends here we're just two bulls? What we're was looking that? at two bulls fighting. What? No way. And then we can take it a step further, upload it, and then figure out what is their like relative abundance or like how, what is their overall use in this area compared to all other 156 areas. We also have uh, techs and uh, other students working on collecting scat, uh, so wolf poop if you will, um, where we can get genetic information from it. So they're also looking at uh, signs of wolves, so do they see paw prints? But then we've seen that track on the um, the beach shortly after. Yeah, so. we had a track in the morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. smaller one, but yeah. mm -hmm. the track, yeah, so, so no doubt. We started introducing wolves back in 2018. The skull that uh, was found, we still needed to do genetic work on it to kind of verify who, who exactly it was. Hopefully one way or another, if not DNA will be definitive, they'll figure out what collar belonged to what wolf and if this wolf wore that collar. Yeah. yeah. There's signs coming out that this Wolf already put puppies onto this island, so their genetic information has already spread to some younger generations who were first born here. The wolf that may have passed definitely did that. And for me, as a scientist, even like in a more intimate, like that makes me so happy. And I'm so happy that these pups are doing really well. A tricky thing being a park ranger, everyone thinks you know everything, <laughs> but you don't have to. It's more important to know where the resources are to find the answers. I've made it a point to take the time to hike. I've almost hiked all the trails on the island. Making connections to place in that way has been helpful for me to remember. Like I was able to get into backpacking and find that sense of home in myself. And then over time, you know, finding my secret little spots that I really enjoy on the island. It's like the best decision I think I've ever made for myself. Um, and very adventurous decision that I think has helped me grow even more to who I am. This park is really special and I've volunteered at uh, some other parks and um, the community, the working community and the visitation, the people who come here, um, really make this my favorite place to work.